Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome into Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Simon Williams. Thanks for joining us. Educators, students, parents, and schools all struggled through the 2020 and 2021 academic year. Some students thrived through their learning in the home environment, whereas others faced hurdles in comprehending new material from home. To combat the learning losses felt in the pandemic, President Biden passed the $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan and $2.6 billion will be allocated towards Arizona's K-12 school funding. Superintendent Kathy Hoffman explains why this is such a monumental move to support Arizona's children. The State Department of Health is coming up with new incentives to get people to roll up their sleeves for COVID-19 vaccinations. Today at a news conference, the AZDHS director gave an update on vaccination progress and announced a new partnership. The Diamondbacks will soon hold a vaccination event, offering free tickets for those who get vaccinated at Chase Field. He left after sophomore year of college to pursue professional basketball. And almost two years later, Brandon Williams suits up for the Knicks, the Westchester Knicks of the NBA's G League and achieves his professional dream. Fans might remember Williams as the five-star prospect who came to U Arizona in 2018 with high hopes. After missing the postseason his freshman year and sitting out in year two to rehab knee surgery, he tried his luck in the NBA draft, but didn't get picked. That led him to the Knicks' public tryout, which he made, playing his way into the starting lineup for game one of the G League season. Congressional big wigs got the big league treatment here tonight in the congressional baseball game for charity, but it certainly wasn't major league caliber baseball on the field. While the play wasn't spectacular, it was all the more fun for the fans who got to see their representatives on the diamond. Arizona Congressman Ruben Gallego and Greg Stanton suited up for the Democrats. Stanton represented a local school with his uniform. This represents Mesa Community College. We have the best community college system in America, and I have one of the best community colleges in my district, so I wanted to honor the, the young players on the team and the school, and they gave me a couple of uniforms, and I told them I wear both. Metal fences backed by cement barricades were put up in the middle of the night Wednesday in anticipation of Saturday's Justice for January 6th rally. Organizers expect as many as 700 will protest the treatment of the hundreds who were arrested in the Capitol insurrection, what the organizers call political prisoners. At least seven of those defendants are Arizonans, including Jake Chansley, the so-called Q shaman. Organizers have promised a peaceful event, but with emotions running high, federal and local authorities are not taking any chances. But Maricopa County Supervisors Jack Sellers and Bill Gates stressed that they, even as elected Republicans, stand by the results of the election and the two statutory audits the county completed before Cyber Ninjas got involved. Uh, so we understand that we're taking a different tact here, but we're speaking the truth. Many Democrats, including Arizona's Greg Stanton, made it a point to mention Cyber Ninjas CEO Doug Logan was invited to testify, but declined. The Cyber Ninjas documents were submitted to Arizona Attorney General Mark Burnovich last month. Brnovich isn't the only one still looking into the election. Chair Carolyn Maloney said she would help Maricopa County in any way she could. In Washington, Simon Williams, Cronkite News. Over the course of the pandemic, we spent more time at home and even more time online, particularly on social media. For those with eating disorders, the additional time spent isolated from others and in front of a screen could be detrimental. The biggest ticket items are $400 billion for child care and universal preschool for six years and more than $500 billion of clean energy investments. Democrat Rokana of California called the clean energy funding vital, but that progressives won't be satisfied until there's a done deal. But it's still coming together, and we're not a going to vote on the infrastructure bill until we have a reconciliation bill with strong climate provisions, and we've been pretty consistent on that. And although today's announcement was an important step in what Democrats are calling a historic shift in government priorities, it was just that, a step, as neither the House nor Senate has laid out a timeline for when a vote will be brought to the floor. In Washington, Simon Williams, Cronkite News.